And welcome to Charm Chats with Kendra and Kat. Just straight to the point this week, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> we are on episode 419. We're off to see the wizard. Airing on April 25th, 2002. This and title... if you didn't recognize the words or the melody, I was yeah. singing, um, what rock have you been living under? Yeah, this one is a nod to the Wizard of Oz, and I am not going to tangent on that because... We don't have the time. We do not have the time. So, we're going to get right on into it, because we're getting to the end of the season. Mm-hmm. And I'm so excited. So excited. Yeah. So we start off in our typical underworld cave. Cole, who is wearing all black, and a dark priest who is in robes in shades of red and orange with a huge, chonky necklace on. Oh, yeah. And I, I call that a medallion. Yeah, it's kind of a medallion. Or an, or an amulet of some sort. Mm -hmm. Raw. And four guards walk into a large, dark room. There are dozens of torches lit all around the walls, and there's a book sitting in the middle of the room on a stand where the stand is made up of skulls. Yep. Just, I love that imagery. You know, it's so aesthetic. Yep. The dark priest is played by... Michael Desberries. Uh, probably Deberis? Debar. Debar? Or Debar? I don't know. It, it's French. Yeah. He was born in London in 1948 and has 109 acting credits so far, starting back in 1960. Most recently, he was on the reboot of the show MacGyver. He did a very good job at being creepy, playing Murdoch's mentor, Nicholas Hellman. And he actually played Murdoch in the original MacGyver series, so it was a cool little inside joke for those in the know. <laughs> anyway, dude walks over to a creepy-looking book yep. and tells Cole about the arrangements needed for the ceremony that would grant him the full powers of the underworld. We are apparently at the dress rehearsal uh -huh. For all of this. Yes. Um, Cole mentions that it's been a while since this ceremony last took place. And we learned from the priest it's been about 500 years, give or take a decade. Yep. He turns to a page that reads, Votum Sanguinis. And Cole asks if he'll feel different after the ceremony. Dark Priest is like, oh yeah, you know, some other people say they feel complete. And Cole says, yes, but are they half human? No. No, none of them. Not so much. He, The dark priest tells Cole that it's time to begin his preparations, and he sends him away with some of his guards. Mm -hmm. Now, Cole and the guards walk down a corridor, and one of the guards the has Asian a line. line. He looked familiar. Like he he's looked a familiar, guy. right. But I couldn't find a credit for him on IMDb. Huh. And... He's a that guy, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, like, he's been in other things. I think he might have even been in this show before. Probably. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I could not find a credit for him, and I could not figure out what I knew him from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then we see a man in a shaggy fur coat holding a staff with a silver ball on the tip is hiding behind a rock as they pass. And, and I yell... Instantly. Hey, it's Armin. Yeah, he is instantly recognizable, so we shall tell you about him. So, Armin Shimmerman was born in New Jersey in 1949. He has 196 acting credits, which feels small. Yep. Um, so far, starting back in 1979, he was... He, yeah, he was, he was in the Beauty and the Beast show that I mentioned last episode, but more people, of course, will probably recognize him from his role as Quark. Quark. In Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Although he did play one of the Ferengi in the first episode we see Ferengi in yes. The Next Generation. But it wasn't Quark. No, it wasn't Quark. None of them were named. I think he was, um, like, the... Not the captain of whatever fucking ship it was, but... Or... Oh, no, this would have been the, the one where they kidnapped um, the, the two Troy ladies. Or the two, um... They kidnapped Troy and her mother. Okay. Um, the other beautiful role that people would recognize him from is Principal Snyder on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Which, at first, before I read that, I my brain went, oh, Principal Skinner. I'm like, no, that's the wrong show. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, but yeah. Um, both of those roles came out before this one, so he was a known face when this show came out. Mm hmm And it's, it's just nice. Yeah, I gotta say, on Buffy, the reveal that 
Snyder knows about all of this shit mm-hmm. was a pretty good reveal because like he's he's generally a bit slimy and no one likes him, but you just think he's like normal slimy. Mm-hmm. And then you find out, oh no, he knows about the mayor. Mm-hmm. And then of course, he's such a fucking bureaucrat. He tries to stop the mayor from breaking up the school and he's like, dude, and then gets eaten. Yeah. Which, fun. Yes, he will be missed. Uh-huh. Gotta though, love Armin. Though it did, you know, it did bring in a, a whole different genre mm-hmm. in that show. Yeah. But we're not a Buffy podcast. Mm, no. And I will say this so. role of his in this episode is, v- I would say, most similar to his portrayal of Quark. Mm. Because, you know, um, bit seedy, not terribly moral, fun. Mm-hmm. But also a little too obsessed with the material things. Okay. Just, but, you know, but there's less no, ears. But there's no latinum. So. Well, no. First of all, it's gold press latinum. That is true. Gold press latinum. Uh-huh. And second of all, he doesn't have a brother. In this. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> anyway, what's <laughs> cool? <laughs> I just, I just love... No, because, like, I literally told the dog earlier, he was staring at my breakfast. I'm like, not for Nog. Definitely for Quark, though. Not for Nog. Mm-hmm. Once Cole and his guards have passed by, he, the, 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 our Armin dude comes out from behind the rock. He taps his staff twice on the ground. And then a clone of the Asian guard mm-hmm. appears beside him, and he tells the clone to arrest him. We cut back into the cave where we started as the dark priest bookmarks a page with a ribbon and closes the book. Now the the cloned guard pulls uh, Armin into the room and the the struggle that's happening looks like it's mostly Armin doing it. Well, yeah. Well, no, I mean like in a way of like the guard's not trying to like restrain him. He's just like, let me see if I can just hold on to this arm very loosely too. It looked... Well, I mean, odd. Yes. For, like, if you were attempting to actually restrain someone, you'd think the guard would be doing most of the, like, but, but no. Like, yanking, but no. It, it makes looks more sense like, in this True, but it, it, does, it does look a little weird, and I would, I would have keyed into that as an evil person right away. Well, you are smarter than most. I am, I am smarter than your average bear. Yes. A boo boo. A boo boo. This is the moment when we learn. That Armin is a wizard. Mm-hmm. You're a wizard, Armin. <laughs> uh, and that his kind, all wizards, are supposed to be extinct. The Dark Priest wonders if he thinks he can stop the coronation by himself. And the wizard says, he's not here for that. Nope. Instead, for revenge. And, and then, then hits, and then completely just hits the Dark Priest between the legs with his staff. Yup. Knocks not- him to the floor. The Dark Priest uses telekinesis. The wizard goes flying across the room, knocking into the altar with the book on it. Then the Dark Priest yells at the guard to stop the wizard, but of course the guard looks like he's... stands there. Yeah, it looks like he's a VHS that's been paused. Yep. Um, He just stands there, and the wizard goes to try to grab the book. The priest uses telekinesis, so it slides away from him. And then the real guard shows up. Mm -hmm. And as soon as the Dark Priest realizes it's an illusion and says it's an illusion. The wizard grabs his staff and he and the clone guard disappear. And then Cole and three other guards run in and Cole asks, what the hell is going on? Yep. We We jump to Paige and Piper in the elevator, heading to CVV department, and Paige answers the question immediately. Yeah. Paige is in a red shirt under a pink jacket with tan pants and a tiny purple and pink purse. Mm. So cute. Her hair is down and straight with a single braid coming down on the right side of her head. Piper is in a light blue shirt that has darker blue flowers as detail under a brown leather jacket and dark brown pants. And it's like a a satiny type of material, like silk or something. Yeah, the shirt. It's like a very shiny sort of shirt. Yeah. Her hair is in two pigtails that are wrapped with leather to look like braids. Which was very confusing to me for quite a while until we got a better lighting on Mm -hmm. her hair. Uh, And she's got the little diamond necklace on. Piper is explaining to Paige that being blunt about Cole being a demon is going to make them lose a sister. Because Phoebe's happier than she's ever been. And then the elevator opens and we see Phoebe staring listlessly out the window. Phoebe is in a brown skirt that has like a white 
underskirt yeah. thing. And a light blue halter top. Kind of turquoise. I think, I think she wore this halter top at the beginning of the season. I think you're probably right. I'm fairly certain this is this is the same shirt from, like, the very beginning of the season. Yeah, we'll have to look, though. Yeah, I didn't anyway. look it up. I'm just... Yeah. It looked very familiar. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's covered... It's covered by a frilly, cream-colored, long sweater jacket thing that has, like, ruffle trim. Yeah. And her hair is down and curly, and it looks super cute. Yes. And, like, it doesn't... It, I like... I like her hair when it's the curled with this this super severe bang. Yeah. Although the it, the the bang is a bit more feathered than yeah. it's been before. Yeah. It does Which granted it is it, like that short it kind of has to be feathered otherwise it just looks weird. Mhm. And you I think that's don't my, have that much hair anyway. I think that's there. my biggest thing with the, with the bang is it looks really weird when her hair is just like slicked back because it's so severely short. Mhm. And it in the past couple of episodes when when she's had her hair slicked back and it's been there it's not been feathered in such a way that it looks good it just looks Mm -hmm. broken she's making a chopping noise somehow yeah all right no that noise a a, A chopping chopping motion motion. yeah for for those not keyed into the visual yeah um it's yeah Got a snorry pupper. We do have a snorry pupper it's better than a puppy humping his pillow so there's yes there is that Anyway, so um, there's a mention of her looking terrible, even though she looks completely fine. Yeah. Again, this is the second time that that Piper has said she looks bad when she looks perfectly fine. Mm Mm-hmm. Just saying. Anyway, Phoebe's like, oh, yeah, I haven't slept in a couple of days. You should sit down. I have big news. Yeah. They think that's funny because they were going to ask her to sit because they've got big news. Uh, Yeah. Paige is doing this thing where she can't help but passive aggressively comment on everything that's Mm -hmm. said. Mm -hmm. And like, girl... Learn some fucking tact. Yeah. Like, you can make faces. Make all the faces you want. But if you say the thing, you're gonna make questions happen. Yep. (sighs) Piper and Paige sit at the table. Phoebe says she has something huge to tell them. Paige thinks she she knows what they were going to tell her. And Piper has to come in and tell Phoebe, uh, "Uh, you you tell us. us. Yeah. (laughs) You you tell us. What what, what are you gonna tell us? Yeah. Just just tell us. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. So Phoebe tells him that she's pregnant. Piper is, of course, surprised. And Paige says... Freaks out. Freaks out and, and has the, like, fallen face. And she's like, by coal? Like, yeah. And Phoebe immediately keys in on this. She's like, uh, hello? Yeah. And then we cut to the underworld as Coal cuts off the head of the guard who got cloned. And it's, a, it's an interesting shot, too, because you see him with the sword, mm-hmm. you see it swing, and then you see the shadow of the yeah. guard go headless. Yeah, that was like, a, a super conveniently cool placed little... large rock on yeah. which is projected a shadow that gets decapitated. Yeah, that was a really nice shot. Because mm-hmm. yeah. they didn't have to, like, deal with actually beheading on camera and making it look good. Mm-hmm. They did it as a shadow, and then you see the head rolling. Yes. Heads, in fact, will roll. Indeed. And then, and then Cole stabs the... Earth. I, I, I love... This is, this is my favorite moment. Cole tells the next guard in line to find the wizard or he's next, and then he stabs the sword into the stone floor and walks off. It doesn't even go very far. It goes it maybe doesn't. like a quarter of an inch. It doesn't, but it goes far enough down to keep the sword Well, the thing is... Upright. I, I'm guessing how they did this is that he just, like, puts it down and then someone off camera, because you can't see the very top oh, of the hilt, it. puts their hand on top of it so it stays upright and it yeah. looks really fucking cool. Yeah. Talk about framing, man. Yeah. Yeah. Because then you just see his feet walk away. Yeah. And then we go to opening credits. Yeah. And there's still, still no, no Daryl. Mm-hmm. We come back <sighs> to just after uh, we left off in the penthouse with mm-hmm. Phoebe pacing a bit. She's like, she doesn't know how it happened. They've been so careful. And then Piper asks if Cole knows. Phoebe says that she hasn't told him yet because she doesn't want him to think she isn't happy about it. So Piper naturally asks if she is happy about it. And Phoebe's like, uh, I don't know. Part of me is. She says that she loves Cole, but that part of her is scared to death because everything is happening so fast and she's not sure if she's ready. PSA, you're never ready. Mm-hmm. You're never ready. Even if you want kids, you're never ready. Yep. You might think you're ready, and then you have kids. 
And guess what? You were not ready. But if you're, if you don't think you're ready, don't have kids. Yeah. Like, if you think you're ready and you have, like, you know, enough well, of, uh, if you have, like, if you're financially, if would, you can, if you feel like you're financially capable and you're emotionally set and, and you want children, and you want children, then I would say those are the three things you have to have in place before you even make a go of it. But, like, if any of those are not in place, I would try and opt out in whatever way you can. Yeah. And and I will admit, the fact that I have never wanted children does make me a little biased mm-hmm. on the, the thought process there of, you know, I would never be ready to have children even if I was a millionaire. Yeah. Because I've never wanted to have children. Yeah. But the the biggest thing there is is being ready, quote unquote ready is is a combination of so many yeah. variables. Yeah. And the the biggest one being that you want children. Yes. That's really truly the biggest one. Mm-hmm. If you want kids and you're not financially capable, like that can get into some really tough area because you'll get stressed real quickly mm-hmm. and you won't be able to afford childcare. You probably won't be able to afford to argue for the amount of maternity leave that you need, mm-hmm. you might get fired because of that yeah. if you have a job. Yeah. If you're, like, a housewife, then, oh, great, now all of the tasks fall to you and your spouse, who's presumably working, is going to be pretty much gone most of the time, and that's stressful, and that that stress transfers onto a kid. Yeah. So, yeah. like, speaking as, as a person who is from a set of parents where uh, they were not prepared for the emotional realities of having children uh yeah i wish it were an opt-in system not an opt-out system yeah Mm Mhm. and i'm trying very very hard to opt the fuck out right oh yeah so i go to my gynecologist and i i ask her about like all the things and she's like oh yeah well like ablation is generally done and that's effectively where they just, like, take a spatula and just scrape it the fuck out. Mm-hmm. Um, so your your uterus doesn't, like, grow much and can't, like, produce much of a lining. They usually do that for women in their late 30s, early 40s, because that late, the periods get, and I quote, really gnarly. And I go, gnarlier than this? <laughs> yeah. You kidding me? I was like, wait, worse than I already have? I, I don't want it to get worse. Can we, like, do some shit? Yeah. Huh. But no. Nope. Still got a few years on this IUD, so we'll see how that plays out. Yeah. It is very my, unhelpfully my, exactly where it's supposed to be. Uh, yeah. My, my birth control is just not having sex. I it's very funny. I don't think that abstinence is a good thing to teach people. Oh gosh, no. But it does work. You know? Uh-huh. I mean, that's true. It is a it valid is, method. It is 100% accurate in that it does work. Uh-huh. Not having sex means you don't get pregnant. However, <laughs> however, that doesn't do anything about periods. So true. Uh-huh. So true. Anyway. Anyway, back to the show. Yeah. Sorry about that little... Piper says Phoebe should have told them as soon as she found out, because then she wouldn't have had to like feel alone going through it. But Phoebe wasn't sure how Piper would feel about it since, you know, she and Leah have been trying so hard. Piper says that she would be thrilled to be an aunt, so Phoebe shouldn't worry about her. Paige asks when Phoebe's going to tell Cole, and Phoebe isn't sure since, you know, he's got this new job and everything. Paige says that Phoebe's going to have to deal with more than she realizes. And Piper's like, yeah, you know, like Cole not being around much due to his work hours. And Paige is like, yeah, that was not what I was talking about. Oh, Paige, darling. Phoebe asks what she means, but Piper's like, it can wait. And then and the then... sound of the elevator happens. Like, we, we hear mm. the whir. We hear the whir. We hear the whir. Of the of elevator. It, of the elevator moving. Yeah. Uh, we don't actually hear, like, a ding yet. No. But Phoebe, Phoebe starts, starts to freak out. out. And, and this says, is and this is again one of those moments of abusive relationship. Mm. But anyway, she, she tells them freaks to... out because Cole can't know that she told her sisters before telling him. Which I'm sorry, what? Like, first of tell all, who you, you tell? You would tell your sisters before you tell him because they're your fucking sisters. 
Well, also, like, who you tell first is not a judgment on who you tell second. This is true. That's anyway. just like a, hey, this is the person I, I need to hear an opinion from first. Yeah. Because this is the person who, you know, maybe has a better position on how to advise me. Or, like, has done this before. Or is maybe better suited to giving me advice because they've done it for their entire life. Yeah. You know. Like, there's that. Little but anyway, things. she tells them to orb out. And Paige is like, um, I thought Cole was against that. And Phoebe's like, yeah, orbing in. Orbing out is fine. Go, go, go. Yeah. Paige orbs out with Piper just as Cole walks in. He is now in a gray suit, and he's carrying some food containers and his briefcase. Phoebe, of course, says she thought he was at work. He's like, I thought you were in bed, and asks if she's feeling better. She says that she is, but that she has to go because she has a deadline. He says he brought her something to eat. She's like, I'll call you later. And then she grabs her bag and heads for the elevator. And we have a weird continuity error. And I'm not sure why nobody caught it. At the beginning of the scene, Phoebe was wearing light cream heeled boots with her outfit. And they were very easy to see because her her skirt was, you know, at like knee height. These chunky cream colored heels. As soon as she picks up her bag and walks to the elevator, she's wearing dark brown Uggs. <laughs> that is very different. Yeah. Now, Uggs are a sheepskin boot from Australia, New Zealand, that area. They were originally worn by surfers in the 1960s, and they showed up in the UK and US surf scene in the 70s. And the actual brand of Ugg, because previously they were just called Uggs, yeah, uh, showed up in 1978 as a division of Decker's Brands. And from what I understand about the copyright thing, because even before the brand was established, over in Australia, that was just the word for those types of boots. So right. UGG cannot sue Australian companies for selling the same thing and calling them UGGs, even if that's not the brand name. Yeah. They can't. They literally can't. Yeah, it's they, They've, uh, what's the, there's a term for, like, when you effectively dilute a brand so much that everyone, like, say, refers to tissues as Kleenex. Yeah, and, you know, in, in the South, all soda is Coke. Yeah. That kind of a thing. Yeah. There's a term for that, and essentially this happened before the copyright even happened, so whoops. Yeah. <laughs> now, Uggs were adopted as a fashion trend in the 1990s to the mid-2000s, but they were never meant to be fashionable. They were never meant to be fashionable. The word Ugg means ugly. is short for ugly, because they are ugly. Yep. They, the boots were literally meant to be worn by surfers because sand gets cold when yeah. your feet are wet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is literally the whole point yeah, of the I've boots. Yeah, I've got a knockoff set. Oh, Bless thanks, Blue. I've got a knockoff set in my closet because winter. Yeah. And, like, if I want to plow some fucking snow, I, I put those those on. Yeah, I, I don't have Uggs, but I'm sure they're quite comfy, and I kind of want They are. I just want them to have more structure. Yeah, they're a bit slouchy. Yeah. Well, no, not, not like, the top slouchy. I mean, like, in the, sh- in the like, foot region oh. because sometimes you slide around and like it's not like there's nothing like keeping your foot in place per se mm. so it's like a slipper boot effectively yeah that's yeah which you know if you've ever seen they have the like the knit ones those are fun mm. uh but very those are by no means at all waterproof so Mm-mm. Mm-mm. if you want waterproof you go with muck looks because mm. they have you know are they furry on the inside yeah. Nice. They're also taller and they've got like basically a coating of like animal fat on the outside to keep them waterproof. Nice. It's basically mucklucks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, Uggs, Uggs became like the fashion trend. Like you can look up pictures of like the nineties and early two thousands. Oh yeah. I, of, like, I lived that. Of like girls in California, especially California with their Ugg boots, mini skirts and tank tops. And I'm just like, really? You know, I'm pretty sure there are several famous photos of Ashley Tisdale wearing exactly oh, that on yeah. the red carpet. Oh Yeah. Oh, yeah. I miss the early 2000s, like, Disney star fashions. <laughs> Those were adorable and, like, so harmless. Like, they just put on a lot of layers. Or, like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. it's a tank top over a T-shirt over a, like, long sleeve shirt. Like, it's layers. And now we've got, oh, no, you must look like adult. There's no tween fashion anymore. Well, see, here's the, the difference. Here's the difference. Back in, like... 90s 2000s they didn't have stylists 
And now they absolutely have stylists. Yeah, but like, there's the where's difference. The, where is the freedom to be like, oh, you're, you know, that that awkward like, you know, ten to fifteen range, like. Just do whatever the fuck you want. No one criticize them. Ever. Do not do it. They are doing their own thing. Let them be kids. Just happening to be on the red carpet. And now it's just like, oh yeah, even the 12 year olds like have to wear a very adult looking dress. I'm just like, no, please, no. Like, let them look like kids. Yeah, I don't know. I And I think also it's partly how the kid themselves wants to look and feel, though. I know, but like... A lot of that is going to be societal pressure, and I just wish they would feel well, empowered yes. to look like kids. Like, just take take inspiration from the Harry Potter kids when yeah. they started going on the red carpet. Because, like, oh my god, the first premiere outfits were so horribly adorable. Yeah. But then, as they got a little older, they got stylists. Mm-hmm. But even even so, then, like, you know. it was shit I would have worn to, like, a middle school dance. Right, but you also have to remember that the Harry Potter kids... Early 2000s. Yes, I know. That's what I'm saying. Take inspiration from that. It's that. Wear your own shit that you would have worn to, like, a middle school dance. Yeah. I just, like, I see photos of, like, Millie Bobby Brown and what her stylists are putting in, and I'm just like, she's 14. She's 15. Like, she should not be Yeah, she's a teenager, and she looks like she's in her 30s in those dresses. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, what have we done to children? Yeah. I mean, toddlers and tiaras. Um, well, not just that, but yeah. Yeah, we're we're not going to go off on a tangent on beauty pageants because... Oh, well, I wasn't talking about beauty pageants. No, no, but I, I that's where I was taking it. Yeah, no. So Mine's we're a little gonna... more far-reaching. Yeah. Let's get back to the show, shall anyway, we? Anyway, cool. uh, Cole asks her, what's wrong? She's like, oh, why do, you, why do you think something's wrong? And he's like, every time you lie, I can see your wisdom teeth. Now, this is a very weird phrase, but it basically means that I can tell you're lying because you're smiling too big or something to that effect. Mm-hmm. Of Like, your, your smile is so big, I can see back into the back of your mouth so I can see your wisdom teeth. It's a weird phrase. I don't know where it came from, but it'll come back. Mm-hmm. It's, it's weird. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, she's like... Uh, we'll talk tonight. And he tries to stop her, but she asks him to drop it as the elevator door opens. She walks in. He says he's worried. She tells him not to be. He says he is. And he asks again. And so she says she's pregnant. We'll talk later. And then punches the button and the doors close. And he turns and he laughs a little and goes, I'm going to be a daddy. And then we just kind of cut to the manor because... It's. I think that is the one moment in this entire episode that was like the cutest Cole moment of like, uh huh. I'm gonna be a daddy. There's there's some moments later where I'm just like, oh, that's sweet. Yeah, he has a couple of moments. Yeah, but you know, Mm -hmm. we cut to the manor where Piper and Paige are standing in the parlor as Leo orbs in. Leo is in jeans and a long sleeve green shirt, and his clothes are a bit baggy on him this episode. Yeah, and I think he's got a really short haircut or something. Going yeah, on. but like it, it's like they're, they're they're just dressing him badly mm-hmm. in this episode. Like it's like his clothes are at least a size too big. Yeah, it's weird. Anyway, Paige has removed her jacket, and we can now see that she's properly using a pink belt with her pants. And her red shirt has these cute little cap sleeves. And I don't know if they're cap sleeves or if they're just off the shoulder. Because she wears well, them off the shoulder. It's a little bit of a cap sleeve. And also one of them and is like slightly more ruched than the other. Yeah. Well, the entire shirt is textured. Well, yes. It it looks a bit like crumpled paper. Yeah. And I kind of like it. It's cute. But no, like they they expand a little bit and they contract a little bit, like depending on what her arms are doing. Yeah. But they're mostly off of the shoulder and for some reason, the left one looks like there's a stitch keeping the sleeve at the same width, and it's not on the right shoulder, because that expands a little further. Yeah. I do not know what's going on, but it looks very good. Yeah. It's it's an asymmetric yeah. style, and I enjoy it. Mm. Leo asks what the emergency is, and so Piper tells him that Phoebe is pregnant, and he, he seems quite happy about this news. Paige says that Phoebe deserves to know that she's carrying a demon child. And Piper correctly states that they don't know that Cole's a demon, just that he works with them. Paige says that they don't know that he's not. But you can't prove a negative. This is true. Piper says that they do need to do some digging and find some proof. Yeah, and since Paige is the one asserting 
the positive side, she is the one who has the burden of proof. Because that is how this fucking works. Yeah. Paige says that Phoebe deserves to know now, but Piper says she doesn't need the stress. Paige questions Phoebe being in danger, and Piper reminds her that Cole would never hurt her, and he couldn't hurt her even when he was a demon. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Yeah. Paige asks if Piper is willing to bet Phoebe's life on it, and Leo steps in between them and does, like, a kind of chopping, like, <laughs> okay, end scene motion. Like, and he's like, do you want my me? advice or not? And Paige, like the typical younger sister, says that depends on whose side you're on. Yeah, she says that if he sides with Piper, it better not be because he's sleeping with her. And then we hear the wizard cry for help. Oh, we, man. We turn around to see him appear... In the hallway, like, coming from the front door, basically. Yeah, from that area. Yeah. And um, he's, like, yelling for them. So Piper turns around, and reminding you, like, they're completely across the foyer from him. Yeah, there's a couch between them. Yes. A couch and a She's table. like, uh, who are you? And then we see one of the guards appear in that weird, like, dollar store samurai armor. Yeah. Kind of. Or, like, dollar store medieval yeah, it's it's it's, like, it's a weird style. It's wannabe medieval. It's wannabe medieval it's, with just a hint of samurai. Yeah, it's it's a bad Renfair outfit. Yes, very yeah. bad. Anyway, um, the guard throws an energy ball at the wizard, and we see like a portal effect happen, and the wizard disappears. Um, and he, he appears to get vanquished. Yes. Yeah. So Piper kind of like rolls her eyes and blows up the guard, yeah. and then. Wonders what idiot demon doesn't know whose house this is. And then the wizard appears in the conservatory, sitting on the wicker couch, saying that not every demon knows, which is good for him. Paige is confused, because they just saw him get vanquished, but he's like, oh, that was an illusion. They're not tricks, they're illusions. Yes. Uh, Leah realizes he's a wizard. Harry. Uh, and Harmon. Piper... Yes, Harmon. <laughs> um, Harmon. <laughs> And Piper realizes that he tricks them into vanquishing one of his enemies. And he goes, oh, but your enemies are my enemies. Yes, my enemies are your enemies. Paige asks Leo if the wizard is friend or foe. And Leo's like, I've never met a wizard. I've only heard of them. Mm -hmm. And then the wizard asks for some credit. He, he walks in the living room and they follow him. And he's like, why would I seek out the charmed ones if I were evil? Piper tells him to stand still or she'll make him go poof. And the wizard calls her the touchy one. And calls and her Peeper. Peeper. And I lost it. I absolutely lost it. Mm -hmm. she, uh. she corrects him, but he blows her off. And then Leo asks what he wants. And our wizard goes over to the fireplace where the mirror is back and perfect. And, and he can only get up to about nose level with it. Yep. Uh, he says he wants revenge on the source for slaughtering his kind centuries ago, and he needs their help. And then he wanders over toward the windows at the front of the house, and we can see that the wall is also back to perfect, and even the picture is back up on the wall. Mm -hmm. It's like it never happened. Yep. So, we now know Leo fixed the house. Yeah. Piper says that the old source is dead, and the wizard's like, Bitch, you thought. He was reborn... And then Piper gets pissed that the source found an escape hatch. The wizard taps his staff twice on the floor and a whole cooked chicken I think appears. That was a, I think that was a small turkey, honestly. I, it was too large for a chicken. Maybe, but it, I think it, it, was appears, a it appears on the table. Like, like a juvenile turkey. They make and sell those, right? Sure. I mean, of course they make them because you can't get an adult turkey without a juvenile turkey first. But like... Sure. Whatever. He pulls off a, a drumstick, he starts eating it, and he tells them that their only chance to stop the source will be before he receives his full powers at the coronation that night. Paige asks how they're supposed to do such a big job on such short notice, and the wizard's like, oh, we need to steal the grimoire. And Leo we... explains that that is the evil version of the Book of Shadows. The wizard then explains that the source has to lay his hand on the book as he says the oath, otherwise he doesn't get his powers. Piper asks about the catch, and the wizard says that the grimoire is protected in a secret chamber by his best guards, and says that he knows that he can get them in, but he can't fight them alone, and asks if they'll agree to be his partners. Piper freezes him as he reaches out a drumstick, mm -hmm. and says she doesn't trust him. Leo says he'll check with the elders, but that they should get Phoebe in case they need the power of three, and he orbs out. Piper says she'll get Phoebe, but Paige is like, no, you've got the fire power, you should stay. 
Piper then makes Paige promise not to spill the beans about Cole, which to which Paige replies, Scout's honor, and gestures with her left hand. Well, uh huh. You know. I don't know that that was intentional, but she did gesture with her left hand, and I feel like this is important to note. Uh, so then, sure. Paige leaves, and Piper unfreezes the wizard and tells him, one false move and you're toast. And he kind of, he thinks for a moment. Yeah. And gets this, like, look on his face, and then he taps his staff, and the drumstick he's holding turns into a piece of toast, and he asks if she has jam. And I started laughing again. Mm-hmm. Like, again, lost it. Yep. We cut over to Cole, in the apartment, on the couch, laptop on the glass coffee table, and he's looking at a baby shopping website on his laptop, now, which has automatic music playing. It does. And it's the worst. It does. But, you know, you have to remember... Early 2000s, that I know, was a thing. But I, I know, just, but like, that's... I just have to mention... the only HTML code I ever knew was, was how, how to, to make... disable that shit. Nice. Now, the music that it's playing is a lovely little lullaby, but I love the fact, and this just shows early 2000s... Brahms lullaby, beachy dubs. Mm. The website is shown as www.infantabulous.biz. Yep. <laughs> and I just laughed. So hard. It's not a real website. It's not. But dot biz but is, dot a biz real, is a thing. Yep. Um I I know of a podcast whose website is gach dot biz. And this is only relevant because it's Star Trek. So Of course. Yeah. Um, anyway. Anyway, Cole is humming along off key as he orders something that costs like two thousand two hundred dollars. Yeah, like it was one ninety nine ninety nine, and it was something like a toy something. I don't know what yeah. it what it was supposed to be because all you see is just a picture of a baby, and there's like a teddy bear, and this music is playing, and yeah. it's just like you can't actually read what the the thing is saying, but it's a two hundred dollars something. Mm-hmm. We hear Julie's voice asking if the witch is home, and Cole looks a little confused and says no, and then she shimmers in behind him with a little notepad. She starts to give him an update that the priests have stepped up security on the grimoire and then says that the wizard has been their only breach and then asks what the dreadful music is. He says it's nothing and closes the website or I think mutes the computer, actually, because it's I don't so know. Visible. He pushes a button. That's all I know. He, he pushes, pushes a button. button. Music stops. Uh, and then she looks at the computer and asks if he's baby shopping. And he immediately gets happy and says that he is because Phoebe's pregnant and Julie questions why he's doing the shopping, and he says that he's keeping up appearances for Phoebe. She reminds him that Phoebe's not there, and, and he closes he... the laptop and asks if there's a little anything. tersely if yeah. there's anything else he needs to be updated on. Now, I understand where she's coming from in this of, like, why are you trying to keep up appearances she's not here? But I also understand where he's coming from Yeah, in that I'm keeping up appearances by buying a thing that will show up when she is here. See... That's the reasoning he wants her to think. Oh, yeah. That's not what his actual no, reasoning is. No, of He's course just not. happy and shopping for baby shit. Yeah. Because he's going to be a daddy. Yeah. No, like, I, I understand that logic. But, Which like, takes on a, a weird flavor nowadays. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. What was your Father's Day post again? Oh, um,. Happy Father's Day to any and all dads out there. This includes women and non binary people who act in a dad capacity as well. And a different shout-out goes out to all the daddies out there. You know who you are. (laughs) Which, I love the fact that the three people that liked my tweet uh, is my friend John's wife, (laughs) one of my friend Jack's girlfriends, and somebody else who follows me, but I'm not sure exactly who they are. But their their profile picture is a a Wulu, or... Is that a Wulu? I have no idea. I... I, mm. It's a sheep-looking thing. Um, it well, it's a Pokemon. Okay, yeah, I have no idea. It's about a Pokemon. Wulu. It's that little the little ship with the 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 big ear thingies and the teeny tiny horns. Sure. Um, and she's holding a ace flag that's like orientated wrong. Well, I mean, it's a little orientated wrong. Yeah. But anyway, I it's mean, real cute. Yeah. And also, like, I've seen on Tumblr that everyone's just like, oh yeah, that sheep's a lesbian. She's called a Wulu. That's a W L W. Sure. So. There you go. Woman loving woman. Yeah. But that doesn't mean she's a lesbian. Mm. Just saying. Anyway. Well, also, Wulu is the way you would pronounce WLW in Welsh. So it just makes it cuter. There you go. Anyway. Let's get back to the show. Yeah. Um, Julie. Julie... <laughs> I love how we do that sometimes. 
Julie asks to speak candidly. He doesn't wait for a response. Saying that she's worried about him, that the witch's influence on him is too great, and that the baby will make the pull of love even greater. Mm. Uh, Cole wonders if she's worried about the coronation, and she's like, uh, no, I'm worried about the next nine months as your bond with Phoebe grows. She walks behind him, like, puts Getting her a hands bit on his shoulder, yeah. and says that he should allow the seer to perform dark magic and let her carry the baby and be his queen so he won't need the witch anymore. And he, he immediately turn, it's, jumps up. This is my other favorite moment of his from this episode, because he, like, slides to the side on the couch and looks at her with this, like, absolute look of disgust and, like what? Like, ew? Yeah. And then he stands up and gets up like he's physically a little disgusted. Yeah, like he is physically And he's like, are you her. crazy? Yeah, are you out of your mind? She says that she's trying to save him because the underworld won't tolerate a leader who's conflicted and that any sign of weakness could basically get him killed. He asks if she's threatening him and she says that she's just reminding him of his future and his destiny, neither of which includes the witch. And then she shimmers out. Cole sits back down, picks up the laptop, and then slams it down through the glass table, shattering it and fulfilling its ultimate destiny in the world of television. As all glass tables yeah. are shattered. Yeah. If you see a glass table in Star Trek, it will be shattered. It is merely a matter of time. Indeed. We are, of course, counting this toward the FAQ, even though it is not in the, the manner... House. Because it's it is furniture. a piece of furniture. Yeah, yeah. So, FAQ is now up to 19 for the season and 68 for the series. Yep. We jump over to Phoebe's office at the Bay Mirror. She has removed her sweater and is on the phone with someone who is making her a bit upset. And this is when I realized that this shirt is the same shirt that she wore in the beginning of the season. Yeah. Uh, apparently, Elise threw out her column and now she has to write a completely new one. And the person on the phone is being a bit obtuse about the difficulty involved in writing an advice column. Yeah. She slams the phone down, knocking over her cup of coffee. Which is for some reason placed on the complete opposite side of the desk. Yep. And then Paige walks in, asking if it's a bad time because they need the power of three. Phoebe asks if it can wait, and then Paige gives her the Cliff Notes version of the story, that the source isn't dead, just reborn, and they need to help a wizard stop him from getting coronated so he won't become all-powerful. I think I've mentioned Cliff Notes before. They're basically just awesome study guides for all sorts of books. They're super helpful. And they're also spelled with only one S. You have it as Cliff's Notes both times. Yes. It's Cliff Notes, right? No, Cliff's Notes. Really? Yep. Huh. Because everyone always calls it Cliff Notes. Right. Including they, you just now. They, they, it is interchangeable as Cliff Notes, Cliff's Notes, and Cliff apostrophe S Notes. It's Cliff's Notes, Cliff Notes, it's the same thing. But then is not spelling it without that intermediate S also correct? Especially if you're going to say it, Cliff Notes. Why do you need to have the S in there? Because it is Cliff's Notes. Huh. I feel like this is, um, uh, Berenstein Bears all over again. It is, it is formerly Cliff's Notes, originally Cliff apostrophe S Notes, and often erroneously Cliff Notes. <laughs> so yeah, they, this, this, feels like, this feels like a, a Bernstein Bears thing. Yeah. Cliff's Notes. Anyway, let's see how I have to edit that to make it make sense. Yep. Anyway, Phoebe wonders what's the worst that could happen if they just let him get coronated. Paige replies, all hell breaking loose on Earth? And, and then, then asks, what's, what's wrong, wrong with her? her? Phoebe says she's just having a bad day and that she needs to fill in Cole and then she'll meet Paige at the manor. Paige immediately is like, no, you don't need to tell Cole anything. He's, you know, super busy being Mr. Hotshot lawyer guy anyway. And Phoebe, of course, doesn't buy this shit and asks Paige what her problem with Cole is now. Paige tries to say it's nothing, but Phoebe's like, I can see your wisdom teeth. And Paige immediately says she doesn't have wisdom teeth and I started to giggle. Yeah, that was good. Paige, of course, gives in because, of course, she's going to give mm -hmm. in. And she wanted to tell her all along, so why would she hold back now? Exactly. She tells Phoebe that she met the vampire that attacked her through Cole at their apartment, and she thinks that it's a pretty big coincidence for an alleged ex-demon. Phoebe questions her use of alleged, and Paige tells her to stop being so naive, saying that he's been acting strange since getting the new job, and wonders if the job is a cover. Phoebe doesn't believe her. Paige says that even Piper thinks Cole has gone back to his old ways, and that's why they were coming to see her that morning. 
Phoebe pushes past Paige, grabs her sweater, gets to the door. Paige asks where she's going. Phoebe says she's going to prove her wrong. Paige asks, what about the source and the power of three? To which Phoebe replies, screw the power of three and leaves. Just sit with that for a moment. Mm -hmm. Screw the power of three. We get a quick exterior shot of the apartment building that starts at the bottom, kind of whooshes up to the top, and then we see Phoebe arrive in the elevator. She's got her sweater back on. She's now added a cute little matching knit hat on her head. Yeah. We don't know where she got this hat because we hadn't seen her carrying it. Also, I think it's crochet, not knit. Whatever. It's... Sure. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she walks in cautiously, goes over to the table where Cole's briefcase is laying, and, and looks at... Some very official, lawyerly-looking papers. Uh-huh. Um, so she puts them back in. And puts then... her purse down next to it. Yeah. And she walks through the room, seeing the broken coffee table, doesn't really acknowledge it, just kind of sees that it's there, yeah. that it's a thing, and then walks to her bedroom door, and she kind of puts her ear to the door for a moment before opening it. And Cole is in there tying a bunch of different colored mylar balloons to the bed. And there's flowers everywhere. And a couple of teddy bears. And he He's... sees her saying, she caught him, and then picks up a gorgeous dozen of red roses. Yep. And goes over, hands them to her, and says he loves her, kisses her, and then kisses her stomach. It was kind of adorable. She uh -huh. gives him a hug, and we go to commercial break. And again, this is why... I said with the thing with Julie of mm -hmm. like, you know, yeah, he's, he's pretending to be this good, this good, you know, normal father to be. Well, that's his cover, Phoebe. but also he's not pretending. Right. Not in this moment. No, not at all. No. Not at all. He's going to be a daddy. Yeah. But I do, I do kind of wonder because he's done like the whole illusion thing before where mm -hmm. like the table and whatever. And I wonder if he heard her coming and illusioned most of that in or if he actually went out and bought it all. I mean, he definitely could have, but, like, also, just the the demeanor he's been having since he found out, I could easily see him, like, walking down to the store and just, like, getting just a bunch of mylar them. balloons yeah. and walking back up to the apartment and, like, maybe magicking a couple of teddy bears or whatever, because, like, how are you going to carry all that shit? Yeah. Um, but, like, he definitely tied them to the bed himself, is my opinion. Yeah. Like, just, I think I think he wanted to do all of this. I don't think he did that as, like, a cover for, oh, no, I have to do something. Yeah, like, no, no, no. He absolutely wanted to do it. I just, it's one of those where it just, it just makes me wonder how much of it was magicked in and how much he actually went out and well, got Well, he himself. only magics when he wants to keep up appearances. Yeah. He doesn't want to keep up appearances. He actually feels this way about the baby. Yeah. So I don't think he magicked it. Because, like, remember the, the, like, romantic dinner thingy that he had to interrupt the demon meeting for? Mm -hmm. Like, it looked really nice, but also it was very, like, oh, shit, meh. And it didn't look personal or anything. Mm -hmm. There are so many kinds of mylar balloon in there. Yeah. That's very personal. Yeah. I mean, granted, it's may perhaps not, like, most suited to Phoebe, but, like, it's, if you just wanted, like, a bunch of mylar balloons to say congrats, they could all be the same. Like, yeah. there's detail work in there. That's and true. that detail speaks to me of having actually gone down to, like, Jewel or some shit and gotten every single kind of congratulations balloon you could find. Yeah. Anyway, we come back... Except the ones that are shaped like graduation hats. True. More we, boards, rather. We come back from commercial break. Paige is taking off her jacket as she walks into the manor. Piper is just kind of leaning up against the, the wall by the door, and she's no longer wearing her jacket. So we can now see that her shirt also has adorable little cap sleeves, or a little ruffly, super cute. Mm -hmm. And I love this top on her. This color on her looks amazing. Yep. It's so cute. It's all good. It's so cute. Anyway, Piper, Piper says that Phoebe saying, screw the power of three, sounds like more than just hormones. And Paige is like, oh yeah, she was pissed. And then Piper realizes that Paige told Phoebe about Cole. Paige says that Phoebe was going to find out eventually. And Piper's like, yeah, she would have found out when we decided it was the right time to tell her. And now Phoebe's probably never going to speak to them again. Oh, and that Paige might as well have just crowned the new source herself. She's not wrong. Which I... Yeah. Yeah. Paige thinks she's exaggerating. And Piper's like, I'm not. We nope. need Phoebe for this plan to work. 
Paige asks what plan, and Piper gets Paige to follow her into the kitchen. And the second they open the door, they have stepped into that large underworld cave where the coronation will take place. Armin, the guards, and the Dark Priest are all standing there. Paige says she liked the other kitchen better. And there's an echo. very funny. There's yeah. an echo in here. There liked. is. And then she makes sure, you know, this is just an illusion, right? And the wizard hopes that she's not the brains in the family. Yeah. Which, again, I started to giggle. Yeah. There were a lot of little giggle moments in this episode mm. for me. Piper, of course, rolls her eyes and then explains to Paige what she's seeing. We get the grimoire, the dark priest, the bodyguards, and a very creepy dummy wearing a black suit and no, like, definable features. Like, you can see indentations where the eyes and the mouth and the nose are. Yeah. But otherwise, nothing. And I, I think that's a person wearing that, which was what makes this extra creepy. If it were just a mannequin, no. it would be less creepy. Yep. But... We, we learn that this is our stand-in for the source because the wizard explains that he didn't get a good look at the source because if he had, this would have been a very short episode. Oh, yeah. But Piper, of course, says he might not be there anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Paige, Paige asks what the plan is, and Piper says that they can learn from the wizard's mistakes, but he's like, no, those aren't... Those were miscalculations. They're not tricks, they're illusions. Yeah. They're not mistakes, they're miscalculations. Yeah. Piper says that he didn't have backup, his illusions didn't buy him enough time, and he got caught. Hence, mistakes. She says they'll go for a bigger distraction while the guards are chasing after the wizard. Paige will orb them in. She and Phoebe will keep the demons busy while Paige grabs the book. Paige says it sounds simple, and she goes to grab the book, and the wizard pulls it away using his staff, saying that he wouldn't have come to them if it were that simple. Piper explains to Paige that the grimoire is kind of like the inverse Book of Shadows. It protects itself from good. She then says that they put a spell on a sack. A nice so that, burlap sack. So that it can hold the grimoire. And probably some cats you're about to drown. I don't know. That's just my impression of a burlap sack. Is cats in a bag? Yeah. Okay. You know, Loki's brain. All that. Sure. Um, Phoebe walks through the kitchen door just then, cries out demon, and then does a jump up to kick the dark priest. And the illusion disappears and she lands on the kitchen island and, being very confused. And there's glass crashing and we never find out what that was. Yeah. Because like, we don't see whatever it is she actually kicked. We just hear it like crash against the opposite counter or whatever. Yeah. The uh, wizard says that he can't work like this. Piper introduces Phoebe to the wizard and says that this was one of his illusions. And then the wizard taps his staff on the ground, and two women appear wearing your typical Renfair outfits, little wench like outfits. Like a cross between Renfair and German beer house. Yeah, a little bit. Mm -hmm. And they start to massage him. Now one is standing behind him, and the other is in his lap. And the one in his lap got an uncredited credit on IMDb, but I actually recognized her, so I'm going to tell you about her real quick. Her name is Janelle Pirzina. She was born in 1980 in Grand Rapids, Minnesota. She only has six acting credits between 2001 and 2004, with this being her second role. But I actually recognized her from her times on the reality game show Big Brother. She was on season six back in 2005 and season seven in 2006 and season 14 in 2012. Wow. She was most recently on The Amazing Race, season 31, which YouTube star Tyler Oakley was also on. Huh. Uh, I haven't watched either show in years, but I think it's hilariously funny that I recognized her from her time on Big Brother. Yeah. And I looked at, because I looked at her and I was like, I know that face. Why do I know that face? Oh, good. She has an uncredited link. Let's see what this is. Oh, that's why I recognize her. <laughs> okay. She's a little ditzy blonde, but, like, yeah. you can tell that the ditzy blonde is absolutely a front. Yeah. Like, yeah. Nice. Like, in another world, she could have been a Playboy bunny. Cool. Ditzy blonde. But, like, you know that she's smart enough to not be a Playboy mm -hmm. bunny. Yeah, yeah. You she's know? She's no Kendra Wilkinson. You yeah, know. Which someone said I reminded them of. In high school. I was in, just like, that's literally just because of my name, isn't it? Yeah. I was like, uh, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> just, just the name. Anyway, Paige is happy to see Phoebe and wonders why she's there after how they left it. And Phoebe's like, I'm not about to shun my Wiccan duties and that, you know, I love and trust Cole even if you don't. 
She says that she came to help them with Merlin, who the wizard calls an overrated hack, and hopes that he's not the only wizard they've ever heard of. Paige asks if Harry Potter counts. Now, I was hoping they'd mention Gandalf, frankly. Well, there is that. Uh, Merlin is a legendary figure featured in Arthurian legend and medieval Welsh poetry, starting back circa 1136. I'm not going to change it much here because there's so much to the Merlin legend that we'd be here for hours. Uh Uh-huh. And also the show. Yep. Not going to go there either. Uh I'm also not going to tangent on Harry Potter because if you don't know who he is, you've been living under a rock. However, I will say that at the time of this episode's air date, only the first four books of the Harry Potter series and the first Harry Potter movie were available. The second movie wouldn't come out for another seven months. Mm-hmm. So, it was, so it was in the zeitgeist, but it was nowhere near like yeah. the height of it yeah. or the breadth of it. It, was, it, it could still be... It Not was, like quite a niche reference, but kind of in between niche and mainstream, like that little gray area. Yeah, it was very much a, the first movie has come out, the second movie is coming out, so people know who this kid is. Yes. They're likely to have heard of the name, even if they don't know the IP. Right. But it is very much not the Harry Potter phenomenal mm-hmm. that we have. Do, 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 do. Thank you. Anyway. Piper tells the wizard to get rid of the illusion women, calling them his life of instant gratification. But he's like, uh, yeah, no, they're they're as empty to me as they are to you. Uh, they're only a reminder of what I've lost. Because illusions are nothing without family. Yeah. He asks them again to help him stop the source and to right the wrong that's been done. Jumping over to the actual coronation room... The Dark Priest is telling Cole that everything is on schedule and the sacrifices are being prepared and Cole is back to being in all black. He's back in black. Yes. He's out of the red. He was in gray, but yes. Yes, I know. Cole asks about the wizard. The Dark Priest says that he's the last of his kind. He probably won't risk oblivion. Cole rightly says he's risked it before. And then the wizard stands at the entrance asking if they're talking about him. The Dark Priest, of course, sends the guards after him, and the wizard runs down the corridor with the guards following. Cole immediately knows that something is off, and the Dark Priest tells him to leave for his own safety. And out of the corner of Cole's eye behind the Dark Priest, Cole sees the orbs from the girls starting to come in. So he tells the the priest to protect the grimoire and flames out, just as Paige, Piper, and Phoebe arrive. Paige gets the sack ready as Piper blows up a guard, and then we get a funny shot where a different guard jumps on her, but we can see that he's jumping at a mannequin dressed in her clothes. <laughs> because you just you just see this still shot of her standing with her fingers out in, in her little blow-up yeah. pose, but there's no movement at all, and then he knocks her over. And yeah. it was just one of those where it's like, for the jumping scene, apparently, they needed a too, mannequin. Too stunty. Yeah. Uh, Phoebe starts fighting with a guard, and the Dark Priest uses his telekinesis powers on Paige, not, like, flipping Flipping her her over over. and knocking her to the ground. We cut out to the corridor as the wizard runs around the corner. The guards run around the corner, and then Cole appears in front of them and tells them to stop. One of the guards actually speaks, so let me tell you about him real quick. Dio Ade has 56 acting credits so far, starting back in 1988. He was born in Nigeria, but grew up in Toronto, which is a little bit obvious due to the fact that his very first acting gig was on Degrassi High, which is a show that seems to be a Canadian rite of passage. Yeah. It is so Canadian, it hurts. Uh Uh-huh. Like, it it was more popular in Canada than Dawson's Creek and One Tree Hill combined were in America. Yeah. Because I have yet to meet a Canadian who did not at least watch an episode yeah. Of Degrassi? Yeah. And I have never seen either One Tree Hill or Dawson's Creek, even though I know the theme song. Yeah, I've never seen yeah, they, any of it. So. There's there's too much TV in America for that to be. But, like, Canadian broadcasting, small enough. Like, the population is small enough that they can reach more percentage-wise. Yeah, no, there there are a couple of, of Canadian shows that are absolute rites of passage. Kids in the Hall. Yep. Um, just like there are a couple of Australian shows that are absolute rites of passage for, for those actors. H2O? No. No. What am I thinking of? I don't know. I don't know. Wh- which ones would be Australian? Oh, God. The one that, that what's-his-face was on? Uh, Home and Away. 
Okay, that's is, not one is, I've heard of. Yeah, it, it's one that, that Julie McMahon was in. Like, it's oh. just, it's basically like their version of a soap opera. Right. Although I will say, I think Degrassi was probably about as popular as 90210. Maybe. Like Beverly Hills, 90210. Sure. That kind of shit. Anyway. Which, should, you know, Shannon was in. Yeah, we should get yes. back to this. So, the guard mentions the wizard. Cole says he's behind them. And they turn as the wizard appears and zaps them with his staff, which is now in two pieces, and making them fall to the ground. He, and then... And the, the middle piece is like connect together in kind of like a, a toothy yeah. connection. So it's um, a bit pointy. Yeah. And he, he points the bit of the staff at the illusion Cole's neck, sad that he isn't real, and then the illusion disappears. And, oh yeah, that's the other thing about this. His illusions, the way he turns them on and off, and the way they appear, feels like Q from Star Trek. A little bit, yeah. Like, it's that kind of... I mean, Q has like a starburst thing happening, but it's that kind of like mood where they just suddenly appear mm -hmm. out of complete nothing and then like disappear into that same way with like a and little his, burst of light yeah and his like entire affect is a little bit cuey mm -hmm. just a little like he's not quite as um flamboyant but yeah i love q yes he's he's a character on star trek that people are very much love or hate and i really like him yes but then i also really like loaxana troy everyone's like oh my god she's so annoying and i'm like um, yeah, she's, like, if I actually liked my mother. Hmm. She's annoying, but, like, she's a mom. And, yeah, she's all up in your business. But it's clear when she loves you. And yeah. I'm just like, see, this is what I, this is, like, goals for what my mother-daughter relationship would have been. Which, frankly, is a bit sad. But also fun. Yeah. And, hey, how can you hate Majel Barrett? She has the most fun in everything she's in. Hmm. Anyway, enough about Star Trek. Back to, yeah, back to Charmed. The wizard takes off running again. Back in the coronation room, the girls are still fighting with the guards. Phoebe notices that the dark priest isn't near anyone else, and he and calls out to Piper. So Piper blows him the fuck up, and Paige crawls toward the grimoire. A guard goes to throw an energy ball at Paige. Phoebe tells her to look out, and then points at the guard. And fire and comes out of her hand like a fucking flames. flamethrower. Flames, the side of her face. Oh wait, no, sorry. <laughs> um, she vanquishes the guard with this bout of flame, and then pulls her hand back and kind of stares at it in shock. Piper asks what that was. Phoebe's like, "I have no idea." And then the wizard runs in and asks what they're waiting for. So Paige calls for the grimoire. It orbs into said sack, sad sack, and <laughs> they orb out. Cut to the manor as they orb in. The wizard is very excited because they got the grimoire. Piper says they need to destroy it and tells Paige to get their Book of Shadows. Paige puts the grimoire on the table, still a sack, leaves the room. The wizard, of course, wonders why they're going to destroy it when they could use it. Piper, Piper says it's evil and yeah. asks Phoebe if she wants to sit down. Phoebe says she wants to go home. Piper says the manor is still home. And Phoebe says that she doesn't feel good, saying it just didn't feel right. Piper says that that's probably because it's new and your power is escalating. And Phoebe's like, uh, how the fuck do premonitions and levitating connect to flamethrowing? Piper reminds her that she had fire powers in her past life. And Phoebe reminds her that she was evil in her past life. Mm -hmm. The wizard asks if they can get back to the grimoire in that tone of... Why aren't we talking about me anymore? We yes. should be talking about me right now. All thing are bird. Yeah. Or what, what's that, that tweet, that bird tweet? You know? Yeah. You know? I, I kind Tweets of Tweets from bird? Yeah. Piper says no and freezes him as Phoebe runs toward the kitchen. Piper calls after her but doesn't follow. And then we get a night shot of the exterior of Phoebe and Cole's apartment and it just looks ominous. Also fatter. Like... The building They might is... be closer to the building taking the shot, I think. Maybe that's it? Maybe. The building is mostly dark, with a few lights on in apartments, and we see a large flag on the roof being illuminated by a spotlight in fog. But it is just the most ominous-looking shot of, mm -hmm. like, this building is darkness. It is haunted. Inside, Cole is staring out the window, and then he smashes the window with his fist... And he is back in the gray suit. Julie shimmers in behind him, asking what happened. He's like, uh, why are you there? 
She says, says that she sensed his pain and was worried. He says she should be worried as the grimoire has been stolen. She says she knows. He asks how she knows. Have you been spying on me? She says of course not. He asks again. She doesn't reply. And he grabs her arms. And this is when we hear the seer's voice before she appears saying she told her. Cole asks if the seer foresaw the grimoire being taken, trying to be like, you you saw it being taken, where was it taken? But the seer tells him that that's not his biggest problem. She says that he needs to suppress Cole because he's growing stronger at the worst possible time. Cole says he can handle it. Julie says, let me try again. And he asks if she's trying to work with the seer to manipulate him. She says, no, I'm just trying to save you. Save us. And, and he's he like, does that disgusted look again. And yeah, says, he's like, there, there is, is no, no us. us. Yeah, she's like, but there could be. And that the struggle would end and he'd be free to rule without the witch's love holding him back. Yeah, he then gets <sighs> mad at the seer, tells Julie to leave. Uh, she tells Julie to leave. And then Julie, like, shimmers out looking real sad. Yeah. Uh, Cole is super pissed that the seer tricked him into hiring a seductress, which if you didn't know from the Sharon Stone move she pulled in the interview, uh -huh. why would you not know now? Yeah. Um, and, of course, the seer says that she was concerned that the baby's influence on his humanity might sway him to the other side. He asks if she's hoping that getting laid would change him, but she says that she was hoping that he would come to his senses before it was too late. She then says that she helped put him into this position of greatness, and she's not going to let him fail now. She also reminds him that only the source protects him from the Charmed One's powers and premonitions. And that if Cole's love becomes any stronger, it will overpower the source, making him lose everything. His power, his wife, his son. Yeah. And then the elevator dings. The seer disappears as Phoebe walks in. She says hi, and then notices the broken window and asks what happened. And we hear the footfalls of her heels. Yes. On the floor. So once again. Not wearing Uggs. Not wearing Uggs. He says that there was an accident and then asks if everything with her sisters went all right. She says they got what they were after. He congratulates her and starts to walk away. And she says that something really bad happened to her. He immediately stops, turns and asks if, about the baby. And she's like, no, no, the baby's fine. It's just that I threw fire and vanquished a demon with it. <laughs> she says it felt awful, almost evil. And he tells her that's impossible. She is the sweetest, most loving person he's even known. And, and she doesn't even have an evil bone in her body. Which, this has got to be like the third or fourth time someone has said that about Phoebe. Uh-huh. And it won't be the last. No, we won't. Anyway, Cole, like, touches her shoulders, trying to comfort her, and she immediately has a premonition of him with Paige in the attic. Though we don't see her face, but it was the shirt that yeah, we the remember. Yeah, the shirt. Yep. Uh, beheading the guard, sitting on a throne next to the seer, and throwing fireballs. She comes out of the premonition with a gasp, he asks what happens. She immediately pulls away from him and runs to the elevator and starts pushing the button frantically, telling him to stay away from her. He calls after her. The elevator comes. She gets on once again, telling him to stay away from her. He asks what she saw, but the elevator doors close without her answering him, and he just kind of stands there looking confused as we go to commercial break. And lost. Yep. Mm -hmm. We come back to the parlor at the manor. Piper has a bunch of potions lined up on that coffee table. Mm -hmm. She picks one up and then w walks, walks behind, behind the, the couch, couch where everyone else is to throw it at the grimoire, which is on the floor just inside the wicker room. Yeah, like just at the threshold. And it's in a tween space. Yeah, yeah it's like 13. Mm. Um, and <laughs> where are the trolls? Mm -hmm. um, and you, you see it like fly just to the other side of the grimoire. Like just past it. And then... Special effects has a tiny little flame pop up behind this book, but nothing happens. Yeah. Piper says she doesn't know what else to do. That was the strongest potion she had. And the wizard's like, hey, we should just keep it. Yeah. Paige says that they should check on Phoebe, but Piper says that they'll go to her once they've destroyed this book. Armin the says they're being hasty because the grimoire could bring them a great power. And Paige has one of my favorite lines. She says that they already have powers. They don't need evil ones. And, and then, then Phoebe, Phoebe walks, walks in. in through the door, sans sweater. Yeah. She says that she has to talk to them and goes to sit on the couch. 
Piper tells the wizard to stay where she can see him. He shrugs and goes to sit on the wicker couch. And this puts him out of her sight unless she is actively facing in that direction. But a la convenience, what can you do? Yeah, she's kind of standing in the doorway to the living room. Like... But she is not looking at him in any way, shape, or form. Yep. So, th- so reminding you, he has now walked into the wicker room with the grimoire on the floor in the wicker room. And she is no longer paying attention to either thing. Mm-hmm. Just putting that out there for your consideration. Consideration. Paige asks Phoebe what's wrong, saying that everything will be all right. Phoebe says she had a premonition that Cole is evil, and Paige was right. And Paige kind of lies and says she didn't want to be right, and we all know this is a lie. I mean, I don't She know says it kindly. I don't know that it's necessarily a lie in that she didn't want it to be right. She knew she was right, but she didn't want to be right. Yeah, but... She kind of wanted to be right. In the way of, like, you always want to be correct about the thing, even if the thing is bad. I guess so. But, like, she says it very sweetly that she didn't want to be right, but I'm always like, yeah, yeah, you did. This is why you fucking told her. Well, Piper asks what the premonition showed her. Phoebe replies, killing, fireball throwing, working with other demons. And then it finally actually hits her that Cole is a demon. Paige tells her to take a breath. The wizard... Gets up and asks, what's taking so long? Piper tells him to be quiet, and he goes and sits back down. Phoebe says she has a baby on the way, and there's new power, and she isn't sure if she can handle it. Paige says that she's not alone, and then Leo orbs in, saying that they've got big problems, and asks where the wizard is. Piper shushes him, saying the wizard's in the other room, and that they've already got big problems, mentioning that Cole's a demon. Like, you know, right now, this is the thing that's happening. Worse than the wizard. I'm sure of it. Uh Uh-huh. She asks what he was going to say about the wizard. He kind of puts a hand on the chair that Phoebe is sitting in and is like, can you handle this right now? And she's like, do I have a choice? And then the wizard asks again, what's taking so long? Piper shushes him again and he heads back to the wicker couch again. Leo says that the elders say that some wizards are evil. And Piper says she knew he wanted the grimoire for himself And Leo says that there's a spell in the grimoire that can consecrate a weapon and make it strong enough to kill the source. Paige asks if that's not a good thing, but Leo says that if the wizard kills the source, he will become the source and have enough magic to resurrect his people. For the third time, the wizard asks, what's taking so long? And then Piper finally realizes it's an illusion. She storms over to the wizard, calling him, quote, a slimy Lord of the Rings wannabe, mm-hmm. unquote, and then throws her hands at him, and both the illusion wizard and the grimoire disappear. Piper says that the illusion was on a loop, as the wizard was just waiting for an opportunity to take the book. Leo says they need to get it back. Phoebe asks how, and Piper says they need to go back to the underworld. Paige is like, oh, we couldn't find the coronation site without the wizard. So Phoebe asks about a summoning spell, and Piper reminds them that they need his blood. Paige wonders if they could maybe ask Cole, seeing as he's, you know, a A demon. demon. But Phoebe says that she can't even think about Cole, let alone see him or talk to him. Paige says that they could go with her to watch her back. And Piper mentions it's a lot to ask of Phoebe right now. But Paige says if it's the only choice they've got in order to stop the coronation, they should probably do it. Yeah. In the coronation room, the seer is standing nearby. Cole is back in all black, and now it's like a turtleneck thing. Like Before it had been like a button-down shirt, and now it's a turtleneck. Mm-hmm. There's a new dark priest wearing a weird bowl helmet thing. Like kind of early Doctor Who slash Flash Gordon type, yeah, type little deal? Yeah, a little bit. This dark priest is played by Osman Sirgood, which is just <laughs> the best name. He was born Osman Sikot. I'm thinking. Soikut. Soikut? Sure. Yeah. Uh, On New Year's Day in 1957 in Turkey. So, hence the name, you know. Ankara, to be specific. Yes. He's got 39 acting credits so far, starting back in 1998. So, quick fun facts. He moved to California in 1984. He speaks fluent Turkish, German, and English, and is studying 13 other languages... And his website is one of the best websites we'll get to say on the show. It is www.surgood.com. Yep. It's just brilliant. Yeah. It's like, 
It's it's basically just his Twitter feed in a different layout. Yeah. It's just a really good URL. Yeah, but I mentioned the website because one of the posts that he put up, again, it's basically his Twitter feed, but I saw it here first, is just a picture oh, yeah. I've seen that. Of, of a casting studio note. Of course you've seen it. I put it in the Discord. It's a casting studio note asking people to stop putting brown paper towels into the toilet. <laughs> And I just laughed and went, why is anybody putting any paper towels in the toilet? That's not where they go. Nope. Nope. Do not put paper towels down the toilet. Or tampons or pads or anything that's not fucking toilet paper. Yes. Or, or specifically liquid. flushable wipes. Yes. They have to be labeled as flushable, otherwise they're not. Yes. Absolutely. Anyway. Anyway, uh, the Dark Priest adjusts Cole's, like, black cloaky thing and it's yeah. got like it's like a it's great a very, a it's very a great big coat. yeah it's a very big like chunky mantle yes there's a, a, a large a mantle on it it's yeah. it's very much like a great coat type of thing yeah um it, not just a great coat it's a great coat yes the dark priest asks how it feels cole replies that it feels heavy and then the dark priest walks away to go get something else the seer moves closer to cole telling him to focus and he's like, yeah, what's the point? We don't even have the grimoire. And she tells him that he needs to keep up appearances. He starts to mention Phoebe. The seer says she's not his concern at the moment. And he's like, uh, she knows I'm a demon. Yeah, and the seer says, oh, she'll come around in time. The dark priest goes to put some kind of a satiny scarf on yeah. Cole. But we don't get to see how this is going to be arranged because Cole stops him and says he needs to find Phoebe. He shrugs off the cloak, and the seer says he's risking the wizard finding him, killing him, and taking his throne. And we see two women, scantily clad, pick up the, the cloak and just kind of walk back to the back of the yeah of the room. They've been there the whole time, but they have no credit yeah. and no lines. But it was just one of those where it's like... And they're essentially wearing chainmail bikinis. It's like gray fabric bikinis. It's yeah, not but, even really chainmail. Yeah, it's, it's just... essentially a, 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 a knitted silver thread like silver yarn silver gray yeah, yeah. it's that, it's very that's funny that's meant to emulate i think chainmail but yeah. it's clearly yarn yeah yeah cole anyway. says that the wizard can have his throne and the seer asks what he thinks his death will solve he turns to stare at her and she says that if losing the witch has cost his will she'll get it back he asks what she means but she just disappears instead of answering yeah Back at Cole and Phoebe's apartment, the girls and Leo are looking for Cole, but he's not there. Paige asks if she's tried his office, and Phoebe says she's beginning to wonder if he even has an office. And then Julie shimmers in from the balcony, like, and walks through the doors, and replies, oh, he does. Piper asks who she is, Phoebe says she knows who she is, and then asks where Cole is. And Julie says that he's safe from her Paige asks if Phoebe wants to punch her, or if she can, and then Phoebe says she should have known all along. Julie says that Phoebe has ruined Cole, making him pathetic, weak, good. Phoebe asks if she has a problem with that, and Julie's like, yeah, I got a big problem with it. And then Piper's like, um, fill us in, please? Yeah. What's going what, on? What's going on? Julie says that Phoebe is just a means to an end, just there to sire a magical child. But Julie can't allow Phoebe to hurt Cole. Julie throws an energy ball at Phoebe, but Phoebe levitates up so the energy ball misses and hits, like, just above a mantle behind mm -hmm. her. Yep, hits the wall behind Destroys her. Destroys some kind of knick-knack that we never saw. Yep. Um, and then Phoebe throws fire at Julie, but Julie cartwheels out of the way. Piper tries to intervene, looking like she's going to go to blow up Julie, but Phoebe says, no, no, this is my fight. And then throws fire at Julie, actually hitting her this time. Julie screams and is vanquished. And there's a sooty spot left on the wall and by then, these two paintings. And then as soon as she's gone, Phoebe calls her a home wrecker. <laughs> Paige says that Phoebe is scaring them from behind a column. And Phoebe's like, what do you mean? And Leo says that fire throwing is an upper level demonic power. And this is the point at which Phoebe freaks out, asks what's happening to her, gasps a little, and then you see her get Shimmer shimmered out, But she down. shimmers downward. Yes. Yeah. Like, pulled through the floor by Shimmer. Yeah. We cut to the underworld as she shimmers in to a cave. The seer tells her to breathe, and Phoebe asks how she got there. So the seer's like, oh yeah, you know, just A little, little bit of magic. magic. Yeah, yeah. 
Phoebe tells her to stay away. The seer replies, stop me. And Phoebe throws fire at her. It doesn't seem to harm her or, at all. Or even move her clothing. Yeah. But then she asks, did that feel good? Or more precisely, evil? No. Eyebrows. Eyebrows. Yes. Uh, Phoebe asks what she wants, what she did to her. But the seer's like, uh, yeah, what I've done isn't important. What What's important is that your husband needs you by his side. Phoebe says she doesn't understand, and the seer gets a little bit of exposition time. She says that they both share the gift to sense the truth, that Phoebe could sense that Cole had something different about him, and that he's been changed forever ever since absorbing the source's power. This, of course, makes Phoebe finally acknowledge that Cole is the source. The seer continues, saying that he needs her help to survive, he needs her love, and that Phoebe just needs to listen to her body and her unborn son, who takes after his father. Phoebe says that Cole lied to her, but the seer is like, he never lied about his feelings. He's never stopped loving you. Even. Despite my best efforts. Yes. Uh, she then touches Phoebe's stomach, actually her upper abdomen, uh, and, and says that the child was conceived in love and that Phoebe needs to embrace this new family or both Cole and the baby will die. Which, of course, works. Yeah. We all know it's going to work because... Yeah. Of course. Uh -huh. Back in the coronation room, Cole and his two new guards are there. The one that gets a line is played by Jeff Henry. He was born in 1966 in Kingston, Jamaica, but he's white. Yeah, I know. That's Which what I was thinking. I thought that was, it was kind of funny in that moment of like, I thought that and then immediately had that Mean Girls thing. If of you're like, white, if you're from Africa, why, why are, are you white? white? You can't ask people why they're white. Karen. Yes. God, Karen. But yeah, but I was just like, he's from Jamaica, but he's white. Interesting. Definitely an outlier. Yeah. I feel like. He's only got 18 acting credits between 1990 and 2006. Mm-hmm. Cole tells his guards to leave. Of course, the white one is worried about the wizard showing up, but Cole tells him to leave anyway, and they shimmer out. Cole then walks around the room a little bit, silently summoning a sword to his hand as the wizard appears behind him. They they fight a bit. There's a little bit of sword choreography. Mm -hmm. Swordiography. However you say that. Um, sure. And Cole finally knocks the wizard to the ground and says, if you wanted my powers, all you had to do was ask. And then we go to commercial break. And we get, when we come back, we get that ominous exterior shot again. And then we find that Cole and the wizard are in the apartment. The wizard is looking at a page in the grimoire, which is handily, like, so the Book of Shadows is all, like, cream pages with dark writing, and this is, like, literal inverse Book of Shadows. Yeah. All night shift yeah. type of. It's dark pages with yeah. writing. And the page Much that easier to read, frankly. Yes. And the page that he is at is the page that had the bookmark in it. Yes. So it's interesting to know that... It's the exact page he was going to be using later anyway. Mm -hmm. The wizard looking at the page, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Cole is impatiently staring out the window. And the wizard says it's tricky stuff and wishes for friendlier confines. But Cole's, is, Cole's like, uh, yeah, those don't exist right now. And threatens to kill him if it doesn't work. The wizard says that pressure isn't really the best motivating technique and asks not to be rushed. Cole says that once the wizard gets the source's powers, he doesn't want to hear from him again. And the wizard says he understands, then asks why Cole is willing to give up the power. Yeah, he, he kneels down to deal with some candles on the floor, and Cole says that he lost someone he loves and he wants her back, and that's all he needs to know. Mm -hmm. The wizard is intrigued that the source can love, picks up a nice little Chris knife, mm -hmm. or Chrissy dagger, um, nice little wiggly boy, and <laughs> says that he needs blood to spill for the spell. Cole holds out his arm. The wizard cuts Cole's arm and then his own. And it's a nice bit of, you know, practical work where there's clearly a tube yes. down the back of the knife. We love a practical effect. Mm -hmm. And also you can see how fucking blunt the tip of this knife is. Yes. It's round. Yeah. Smoke starts to rise up from the grimoire as the blood drips onto it. And the wizard says the same phrase four times in dramatic effect as each goes. If you would like to say the Latin. Malus into exitus omne. Now, according to Google Translate, this is Latin for into every bad outcome. And I believe if you had a typo that was 
Holus. Yeah. Into but, Exodus Omnate, which is into every vegetable. Yeah. Hold on. Let me let me bring up the, <laughs> the Discord real quick. I love I love a typo. Was it vegetable? It was vegetable, yeah, it right? Was vegetable. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Yeah. So so the the first word <laughs> of, of of malus is bad. Mm-hmm. Malus equals bad. Yeah. Holus equals vegetable. So holus into Exodus Omne. Turn the vegetable into, into every issue. Yeah, the vegetables into every issue, which I just, I love how screwed up the transcript is sometimes yeah. because it's not always a native English speaker who's doing the transcripts. Which that or, font is a little difficult to parse. The Malus was in a very stylized font. Yeah, because the, the M was very much mm-hmm. one of those like, it's like big when, letters. It's like when you have a, a, a weird font where the kerning is a bit off for like, the word flickering, which then makes it look like fuckering. Yeah. Yeah. Choose your fonts wisely. Yes. Choose very wisely. Yes. Just don't get down on Comic Sans. Fuck you. No. Sorry. No. I, I, I love a good font that works for dyslexics. Yes. Yes. What's the, what's the one where it's like Comic Sans, but they just weight it at the bottom and it makes it look completely different, but also better. I'm not positive. Well, either way, it. I like Verdana. That's the other the mm-hmm. other font that I really enjoy. Like I'm a solid Times New Roman girl, personally. I mean, but I also don't have dyslexia. Yeah, I don't have dyslexia, but I do have like issues. standards. Yeah, <laughs> that too. Anyway, anyway, they both rise into the air and they start to glow a bit. And the wizard kind of extends his arms and starts to pull like this ghostly outline that is apparently the source's powers out of coal, and then the seer and Phoebe appear on to the side by the balcony, and the seer tells her to save him for her son. And Phoebe throws fire to vanquish the wizard. Cole, of course, goes back into himself, falls to the floor, and Phoebe rushes over to him, and I'm amazed that he managed to miss all of the candles on the ground. Yup. In the attic of the manor, Piper and Leo are standing nearby as Paige is scrying, which brings our scrying total up to 10 for the season and 15 for the series. Which means that literally two-thirds of the scrying has happened in this season. I mean, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Anyway, Piper is pacing a bit and wondering if Leo should go back to the underworld. Leo says he already tried and he can't sense Phoebe anywhere. And just as Piper poses a very sad question of like, well, she has to be somewhere, right? The crystal points to a place on the map. Yep. Back in the apartment, Cole is still on the floor. Phoebe asks if he's okay. He asks what happens. She says she vanquished the wizard. And Cole's like, but he was our last chance. And Phoebe's like, no, no, he he wasn't. And, and then, then Piper, Paige, and Leo Orban... And what I found very interesting about this is that Paige orbs in by herself and Leo orbs in with Piper and they're two different colors. Yeah. Like, I forget who's what, but like one of them is, is more white and one of them is like more blue. Yeah. Th- it was one of them looked a little brighter to me, but I couldn't yeah, tell. Yeah, that, that was shimmer. probably Piper and Leo, I think. Yeah. Um, and I just assumed it was because there were two of them. Yes, I know, but like... one of them. You, I just find it a good detail to be like, oh, like, Paige's orbing is technically different from a white lighter, even though it is a white lighter-based power. Yeah. So just that it would be, like, a completely different color, as in being indicative of a half-white lighter, I thought was interesting. Yeah, I didn't realize the color shift, but I saw the the difference in brightness. Yeah. So, interesting. Well, of course you didn't notice the color shift. It was blue. Yes. Anyway, uh, they're happy to have found her, but she says, it's too late. And Leo's like, uh, what are you talking about? And this is the point at which Phoebe reaches over and picks up the grimoire. Paige is confused, saying that she thought only evil could touch the book. And Phoebe's like, yeah, you're right. Piper asks what's going on, and Phoebe says she's embracing her new destiny. And then grabs Cole's hand and looks at him as he looks at her, and they both flame out. Piper asks what the hell that was, and the seer says that that was the source and his queen. Piper naturally gets pissed at her and says, you did this. You poisoned her. Yeah. And Paige is like, oh, we should vanquish you. And the seer's like, uh, bitch, you can't without the power of three. And then disappears. Bye-bye. Paige is, of course, in disbelief. 
Piper asks Leo where Phoebe went, and he tries to sense her and then says that he can't, so she must be in the underworld. And he is completely disregarding the fact that he couldn't sense her even when she was not in the underworld just a moment ago. Just saying. Just saying. I mean, there might have been a time issue where she'd only just been transferred up from the underworld at that point. It could have been, it could have been timing. It could have been. I'm just saying. I mean, we haven't yet had the confirmation that he can no longer sense her. This we is just have... Oh, maybe? This is true. Um, anyway, anyway, Piper tells Leo to orb them to the underworld so they can drag her home, kicking and screaming. Paige reminds them that they'll never find the coronation site without the wizard. And Piper's like, I don't care. We can't leave her down there. Leo says they don't have a choice. They're going to have to find another way. And then we go to the coronation room, or just outside it, more like, as the coronation is about to take place. Phoebe is now in a long black velvet dress, and this is what we would now call a cold shoulder kind of dress. It's it's it has straps and long sleeves, but the shoulders aren't covered in fabric. It's a stunning dress. Yes, it's gorge. It's so pretty. It has a bit of a train to it. Mm -hmm. Super pretty. Cole asks if Phoebe is sure about giving up her life, but Phoebe says her life was with him and their baby, and they'll be strong together because they're family, and they kiss. And for some reason, right here, I'm like, Damn, her chin is pointy. <laughs> and then Cole says, I love you. Phoebe doesn't reply. And then the seer says, it's time. Phoebe says, they're ready. And the seer smiles as they walk past. They walk toward the dark priest. It turns into that slow-mo that they make in post. Mm -hmm. As opposed to that slow-mo that they do shot as slow-mo. Yeah. Uh, where they they literally didn't increase the frame rate. So it just looks kind of choppy. A little bit, yeah. And the, the camera angle changes to overhead. We get a lovely a little, little shot. spinny shot. We get a lovely shot down Phoebe's dress. Mm -hmm. um, and then the Dark Priest opens up the grimoire as they approach. And once they get to the table... We go to end credits. Go to end credits. And it's kind of ominous music playing. Mm -hmm. It was... Definitely an interesting way to end it. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a cliffhanger, but it's not cliffhanger-y. Yeah. You know, like, it's one of those where, like, if it had, if the season had ended right there, it would have been a fine season ender. Mm -hmm. True, true. Because it would have been like, well, fuck, how are they going to resolve this shit next season? Uh-huh. I mean, we only have three episodes, so yep. you know it'll happen. Yep. But that's the point, is, is we still have three episodes for them to resolve it. Yeah, I know. We don't have to wait for the next season for them to resolve it. True, true, true. So, that means with the end of the show, with the end credits rolling, we're on to our ratings. Yes. Do you know what you want to rate? You go first. I will go first. Fine. I am giving this episode a 6 out of 10 differing destinies. Why did I have a feeling that you would go for an alliterative... You know, I, I wasn't going to, and then that last moment happened, and I was like, yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to go for 8 out of 10 Wily Wizards. Interesting. Mm hmm Yeah, he'd totally, like, fucking draw a tunnel on a rock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I could absolutely see that, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so with ratings done, that means we are on to outfits. I think... Other than Phoebe's final dress, which is just gorgeous, the best, but lacking detail, mm. uh, just like a little bit of like silver embroidery, I think in places would have really like zhuzhed it up. Yeah, made um, it pop. Piper shirt, Piper shirt is yeah. great. Piper and Paige were in the same outfits the entire episode, but I like them best without the jackets on. Yes, you could actually see the detail of the shirt. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Phoebe's final and dress. Honestly, Cole's suit at the beginning, the nice, the nice all black. dark, well fitting suit. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Um, I did kind of enjoy uh, Phoebe's main outfit sweater. Yeah, if it had been a little less ruffly, I'd like it better. Uh -huh. But it wasn't. It wasn't bad. Yeah. Um, but that final dress was just chef's kiss. Yes, I hate that phrase, but chef's kiss. Like <laughs> it was perfection. So, this is that done. We are going to go on to our social media stuff. Yes, social media time. As always, you can email any questions, comments, comments, queries to charmedchats at gmail.com. And you can find the links to whatever we mentioned in the episode today at charmedchats.com. Which is where you can also find all of the links to our Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, YouTube, Redbubble, and Patreon pages. 
And if you want to join the Discord, all you have to do is send us an email with the phrase, we're the power of two plus blue, and we will send you out an invite link. Just be sure to let us know who you are once you get there so we can give you the proper tags so you can see all the channels you're supposed to be in. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited for the ending of this season. Mm -hmm. Because then we get to have next season and the insanity that that will bring. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Going to be good. Uh-huh. So, until next time, sleep tight. Don't let the warlocks bite. Bye. Bye-bye. Piper, Phoebe, and Paige kicking evil sauce weekly in the swarthy.